make them all remember my name. Seeing the picture and I forget. I believe in my head back in the moment. I've been flying around, oh, I've been going. I'm gonna ride where the wind is gonna blow me. I'm gonna be the one to let you know I'm done. And that is that, that narrative drives your work ethic. Oh, yeah. And your work ethic drives your confidence and your confidence is there for all to see. Yes. One of the things we'll get into in detail later um, is your appearance on the, the Terrell show, which oh, great. was a display of knowledge, a display of, um, you know, your ability to produce stuff on demand, right? As is the format of his show, but not yeah. only your own stuff, but other people's stuff. Oh, yeah. uh, at the drop of a hat. And um, what I did notice is um, when a word would be called out on the yes. show yes. and then you would think of the tune and you would you would uh, sometimes grab and then you'd you'd be like picking the right key. Um, yeah. And I and I noticed like sometimes you would grab the first the first chord and then you go, nope, let me go up a step. And yeah. then you would proceed to do the tune. And I thought, oh, is yeah. he is he uh, is he. Um, doing that because the keyboard was pre-tuned down because you know i remember and right. here's another story and and this was not on this is not in my in my my notes here but when uh we were doing some music theory back when you were in high school yeah and your private keyboard your home keyboard had that modulate modulation function which yeah. this guy has yeah. now transpose yeah. the transpose key yeah and I remember uh, sitting down and we were working on like part writing and four part harmony stuff yeah. and, and right yeah. and uh, and how to do that. And I would say, oh, well, let's look at how it's going to let's how we're going to voice this. And I would play the D chord and it would be a C chord or whatever. And I was like, whoa, what, what is this? And oh, and you yeah. go, oh, yeah, it's a transpose button on the keyboard. Isn't it great? <laughs> and and I said, what what is this new devilry? I just couldn't oh, yeah. handle it at all. Oh, I was totally God. freaking out because I had never actually uh, played around with a keyboard that has the transpose function oh, really? until oh, your home funny. piano. And oh, yeah. uh, well, it's black magic. Home, it's just the dark arts. I yep. couldn't handle it at the time. Oh yeah. No, before I was playing in every key, that was my best friend in high school. I loved that. I would transpose E flat to any key. <laughs> and let's talk about that because that actually gets back to, well, it's sort of in the theory box and it's also in like the instrumental technique box, transposing things, being the skill of being able to play a tune in, let's not say like all 12 keys, but like a bunch of different practical keys. Like you could do it up a step, down a step, up a half step, down a half step, up a third, up a fourth. Um, yeah. Is that, was that, is that simply something that you went to school on in college, let's say, uh, the, the, the ability to just transpose at will? Yeah, I think I just think about progressions more especially when I started like really practicing guitar, mm. um, I started thinking of progressions more as numbers than notes. <sighs> and that- That uh, was such a question of mine. I, I, so tell us what you mean by that. Cause I know what you mean. Numbers yeah. and relationships rather yeah. than, rather than specific identities, E flat major seven, that's four major four, seven exactly. in B flat, right? Yeah, so exactly. the numeric but, relationships that, helps, that ties in honestly with um with the modal interchange stuff i mean you yeah have, it's, you don't have to call out uh specifically what what chord it is you know it just right. is it's it's all about the the key and the context that it's in so right. i mean what i'm sorry I'm, for getting off track what i mean not at all by roman numerals for those that do not know is like just the notes in the scale all uh translate to a certain chord whether it be major minor augmented diminished with, with tensions without tensions you know in in all forms but like if you think about it like that then you know thinking thinking about chords out of context i don't see the easy um connection you know if you're playing in a key I get it helps, you know, if you're like reading a lead sheet, I guess, and it's like there's a lot of chord changes. But it, for me, you know, a lot of my writing process is just thinking about rather than playing, let's say we're in B flat. If I'm playing a B flat, I'm playing the one. I'd never think like, oh, B flat. Because then you get tangled up. Yeah. 
let me ask you this. Um, okay, well, voice leading, uh, we had talked about it a bit earlier. Do you mm. think, uh, do you ever catch yourself thinking, I suppose, is the question. Do you ever catch yourself thinking more horizontally, more vertically, or both at the same time, this sort of matrix, right? Uh, or does it depend? Or is it all just subconscious That's a really anyway? Good question. I, I, I would say that I'm thinking about it more, uh, more horizontally, if I had to really put a finger on one, um, because you're thinking about a chord's relationship with the next chord when you're when you think about things like pedal preach <laughs> preach so yeah I'd, I'd say if i had to if i had to pick vertical or horizontal i'd probably think about it horizontally you heard it here first ladies and gentlemen <laughs> horizontal is the winner it's all about the voice leading right it's all about the relationships yes, yes. it's not about what comes next when it's we're not about about right one entity in isolation right right well that's great. Uh, do you ever think about, um, uh, again, I, I think this goes under this sort of subliminal category, but chromaticism. Uh, you mentioned tensions in chords. Um, mm -hmm. And like when you're talking about voice leading, the creepy, crawly, spidery movements, do you yeah. ever think about chromaticism uh, um, actively or is it, again, just a, an intuitive way to get from A to B? Yeah, I'd say for in terms of that, it's definitely more of just... Um you know, it, it works with the general uh, lessons that we learn in in theory, I guess, like that it's just if it sounds good, then I'll do it. I, I never think like I'll do a little walk down because chromaticism, like, you know, I'll, I'll do it if it sounds good. My uh, I, I think the reason I specifically put chromaticism is because and I didn't know I was going to do this, but I'm going to have a go. Oh, let's go. Uh, in your tiny desk, mm -hmm. you did some little tweaks, some little things different in your tunes, right? Yep. Yep. And one of the things you did is when you go from the, uh, let me get, let me get this, uh, queued up. Let me get the right timbre here. When you're going from the F sharp minor seven back to the D major seven, you do this chromatic thing where you go. Oh, on, on walking home. On walking yeah, home. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I'm still not 100% what all the notes are, but you're doing a descending chromatic bass line to get from the F sharp down to the D. Yes. And that was not, that's not in your original track. No, no, that's no. sort of the live that's true. rendition. Yeah, I, I forgot about that one. No, and that you was, did it, true. you started to do it midway through the song, and then you did it almost every pass, right? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. The, the and, last couple, I think. And yeah. it's brilliant. And it's those like, kind of little details that just makes, uh, it makes everything more exciting because it makes the fact that the original doesn't have that. And this is like this little, it's like this little, it's like a custom tailor suit. It's not yeah. exactly what you thought it might be. Um, right. I mean, it, the, the idea of identity, it is, and yet it's not quite, right? Um, Absolutely. what, what made you do that little chromatic descent? You know, I just like that. I, I yeah. like, uh, you know, I mean, just, uh, I play that a lot when I'm, uh, when I'm practicing, honestly, like ah. just the idea of like, for me, it was like, um, what was it? It was F sharp. So it'd be, I was playing an E major triad with an F sharp in the bass and then mm. just descending the first two notes in the E triad at the same time that I'm descending the bass note. Hold on. I could I can get the piano up too. It's not it. That's I don't quite have it's it. Like a, I don't like, quite have it. Hold on. I'm gonna get the I'm gonna get oh. this out. I'll I'll okay. break it out. I'll I'll show you. You you were once the teacher and now Be yes it becomes the teacher and it's one of these things where if it ever was on a conscious level it becomes subconscious and sort of um just implicit and uh internalized yeah, yeah exactly but do you yes. think of it as oh i'm doing i'm gonna do this tune which is an f sharp minor and it's alternating between Ooh. six major seven and Ooh. one minor seven right and mode mixture because uh, of course this is your tune why am i telling you about your tune <laughs> But you have six major seven. This is how I, because I'll tell you, this is how I theorize and understand yeah. your piece through theory. Yeah. 
get the volume up a bit. So you have six major seven, and then you have um, you have seven diminished seven of one minor seven. Okay. So you're that's, using that's how I would think of it too. Right, you're using that's, six major seven, and then raised leading tone diminished seven, and then one minor seven. But here's the here's the here's the chord which makes the whole piece. The yeah. flat seven minor seven to lead back down. So the idea that there's this dual directionality. You have the sharp seven or the raised seventh going up, and then the flat seventh going down, and it gives you that lovely G natural, which is flat two of of the key. And so the mode mixture is there, and the the directionality of the voice leading. It's like there's right. this almost like positive tension or like a, a positive magnetism going up, but then the very negative magnetism going yeah. down, and the way that it it pulls on your emotions. Right, it it lifts you yeah. up and it's tense and then it oh but then it just dissolves. That, and what that, I what I was telling my high school right. class Definitely. is it's like this pendulum. It just keeps swinging back and forth. Yeah. But it doesn't swing the same way each direction. It swings sort of. It's like a crooked pendulum. You know, it right. pulls you up and then it and then it settles you down. Yeah. Um, this it's is this is my this is my reaction. My breakdown no, I, over two. I hear that. It's a, it's a powerful progression. The uh, the flat six to the one. I think it, it does create a lot of like beautiful tension of sorts and just doing the things like that that chromatic walk down like just sort of um like they like snap you out of it real quick you're like mm. oh oh that was cool like just for like a brief you know I, and that's a beautiful way to put it i've never I, I i don't generally think about um you know the emotion of uh progression rather than a song but right. it is a cool thing because I think when I think about emotion, like I, it, it's more easily associated in the lyrics. Yeah. But that's beautiful. I love that. I mean, just like as like an as a, I'm sure that's something in like instrumentalists, like that, like they do all the time, and like I, it's hard, it's harder for me at least to be conscious of that. I guess I'm just easily associating that with, I guess, the vibe. It's a, it's certainly what I when I say emotion of the chords, it's certainly a subplot which which right. serves no, serves the song so, as a whole. It's such a good point though. It's not, it, it's an incredible point. I never I never thought about it like that. Would you humor me and, and talk to me about the writing this particular tune because this is the sure. tune that is that is the most uh, the most on the in the forefront of my mind right now as of mm -hmm. you know December twenty third twenty twenty. This is the song that is just how how did you you know come up you, as you said it's a very powerful progression yes. um and in my notes is you know how do you approach songwriting we were texting uh, you know a couple of weeks ago and i asked mm. you what do you start with what, where where is the original idea uh you know in the process and and you said progression um you sort of find a yes. progression and then work from there talk about finding that progression because you know, I'm the music theory teacher at my high school, and I and I'm trying to empower my kids and say things like, "Well, look, you know, you look at you look at these tunes, mm -hmm. uh, your stuff, other other great artists' stuff. They'll have four different chords in it, not twenty five chords. Oh yeah, four. And look Let's at how powerful it. you can make a four chord uh, progression. So, how did you find the progression? Was it like always in the always in your mind? You know, um, like rumbling around in the background and you like brought it into the foreground. Like, how did that happen? Yeah, I mean, I think that just if you if you pr uh, play a lot throughout the day, if you practice a lot, like you'll stumble along something that could be, you know, I'm not I'm not sure exactly what is the first instance of of that six to one that I've ever heard, but it's definitely, you know, you hear it a lot in in music. It's and, everywhere. Right. Yeah, the, it's, exactly. All of the movements are not uh, novel inventions, and yet right. your particular uh, appropriation of these chords in this way, right? Um, and down and down to the the harmonic rhythm, right? Da six beats, two beats, six beats, you know, and <laughs> yeah. then one beat, uh, you know, the right. way that they move, when they move. Um, yeah. It uh, just sort of, you just found it. It just kind of, did it just yeah, sort of emerge into right. your consciousness it's from funny, practicing? It's, it's, in uh, in relation to what we were talking about before, I actually, so I guess you could say it's in F sharp minor 
the the studio version um, right i actually recorded it in f minor i was oh uh, wow when i was playing it it was uh d flat uh and e uh, diminished right i guess right yeah uh, to the f minor seven right because i was I was I was playing in that key and um, I had some drums for it and I it was the you know the that session I make a lot of stuff with uh, with my friend Chris who was also a student at North Shore Middle School at the same time. Talk um, yeah Chris a Anderson. Yes, Chris Anderson. So this was this is not in my notes, uh, but I I have noticed that you have you have your 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 guys as you call them your your yes. band. Yep. uh some wonderful they're all wonderful musicians oh yeah uh from different parts of the country but but chris yep. is a north shore uh alum a, a and north shore i Viking alum yeah and i did not know him as a student i never had him as a mm. student um, Yeah, he was a band kid band guy oh that makes sense yep. and uh what, what a great technician on 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 the drums uh oh yeah i've yep. been watching a bunch of the youtube videos um very impressive these blue dream studios LA, la recordings oh thank you man um I'm very proud of those those are wonderful some of the stuff that's really well produced of you and your band like in studio live mm -hmm. uh you can really see the artistry of what all the guys are doing um oh yeah they're you know, they're amazing they're they're you know not only my best friends but uh musicians that i highly respect and, yeah uh, yeah and and t let's go into that. So, did you go to uh, college? Uh, obviously, he Chris went to uh, North Shore. Did he yeah. go to Berkeley also, or did you reconnect with him at some point um, later I mean, on? We were we were like, you know, best friends in high school. So he he uh, when I went to Berkeley, he went to um, Loyola in oh, wow. New Orleans that uh, has a great jazz program he was oh, uh, wow. for jazz drums he's uh traditionally a, a jazz player before right. he will uh before he got tangled up with me <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah no he uh and funny enough i met um my saxophone player when i went to berkeley and chris met my keyboard player when he went to loyola and then we all uh hung out sometime and we all played different instruments obviously and uh whenever i it just it sort of kept growing over time like it was originally just me chris and zach and then we met jordan who uh the keyboard player in right. new orleans and then my uh my bass player uh yeah he was just a, a kid in buffalo who he uh he was like hey i'd love to play with you sometime and he wound up playing bass on calvin's joint um oh and, is that right in the band. yeah yeah and, oh look uh, at that he's a couple years younger than the rest of us so he just sort of like fell into the mix wound up going to berkeley like two years after uh me and zach did uh-huh um and then the last piece of the of the puzzle from this past tour uh morgan who is the other guitar player oh uh, right a second guitarist yeah. yeah he uh he plays in a in a band called Butcher Brown, um, that I am a diehard fan of, and I- Butcher Brown. Yes, Butcher Brown. Folks, I, uh, get on Butcher it, Brown. Butcher Brown. Yes, please go check them out. Those are my guys, they are amazing. I wanted to be the king that could hold the crown Oh, you never thought things was heavy, but you know now As far as my focus, I ain't seeing things the same Gotta get back to it, gotta get back to it Make me more remember my name 